font is that? Uh, that is Street Fighter 4 font. Okay. Is that what it's called? Uh, no. It is okay. a free version that looks an awful lot like the Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4, 4 font. font. Oh. But, you know, it's it's called, like, SSF font, you know. Ah. <laughs> Who knows what that stands for? I don't know what it stands for. It could stand for anything, right? You're right. It could. <laughs> Salvate, this is Jeff. This is David. We are playing Azra's Wrath. And uh, we... Last time, Azra was falling through the sky like a On meteor. Fire. Uh-huh. And he... Uh, He's in some sort of weird yeah. Hindu version of Ash Lake, it appears. Yeah, exactly. He's kind of in Hindu... Uh, not hell, but... Purgatory? Yeah, kind of like, it's more like the road to it. Wait, new character. Who is this? Where am I? Well, this is Naraka. But I won't bother explaining because I doubt Who you could it be? Understand. So for now, let's just say you are having a bad dream. Who are you? Who Good indeed? question. Not the right one. Did you say a giant golden spider? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't. Start climbing then. Basically, your Navi equivalent, except you know it's a golden spider, and it's always it's always coming in from the top of the screen. Doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> that that is significantly better than Navi in every way. <laughs> Go. Well, I mean, you yes. gotta have your. Uh... There is a reason why you must continue to climb, isn't there? You may have forgotten why, but the flame inside you still burns. That's it. Keep going, Asura. Asura! But this episode will be our, These are our tutorial. The Impure Goma. As Azura is dead and climbing out of hell, we will remember how to fight. He okay. Took a, he took a hit to the head, so. Right, right. Uh, I do like his, his casual training attire. <laughs> it's quite he, nice. He doesn't have quite the uh, mm -hmm. Jack's arms. Yeah, exactly. This is his. Uh, and he's pretty, he's pretty mild, all <laughs> things considered. Yeah. I like how you're fighting weird skinless gorillas. Yeah, the weird skinless gorilla things, exactly. So we're playing Parasite Eve now. Uh, a little bit. So <laughs> maybe a little less freaky. Yeah, this, there's not quite the same body horror mitochondrial explosion of flesh Which that still... I usually associate with the game. <laughs> That, it's like if I uh, remember only one thing from Parasite Eve, and that's is that an first opera, cut scene. And yes, <laughs> that rat <laughs> changing. The rat was just like, oh my ah. Uh. The LP of that in the uh, the archive is actually pretty good. I recommend it. Okay, because I couldn't make it through that. the game because I'm a fool. Yeah, I have vague memories of uh, Parasite Eve two, I think. That's just being over, being over at a friend's house, at, and this is like in middle school, maybe? Like I a don't really, even. really long time ago. Yeah. And it was at the last boss, so it was the last boss fight, and our mom had come over, you know, to pick us up, to take us home. Yeah. And it was one of those things where you're like, no, 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 just like, it's five minutes, it's five minutes. <laughs> Look, it's the last boss, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then like, you know trying to be like, hey, mom, you know, maybe you want to talk to his mom, you know, just, you know, just catch up. Y'all catch up. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll continue slowly beating. get our things together while looking at the screen. Uh, that was uh, that was our friend that had the PlayStation because he did not have a PlayStation at the time. So right, right. There was also that novelty. Uh, right. I think that's no, that... how I first, first played uh, Font Messy 7 was that way, too. So, right. Good times. Didn't y'all eventually have that on PC? Yeah, we actually got the PC version of Final Fantasy VII and VIII because we never had a PlayStation. We did eventually get one uh, after the PS2 came out when they were, you know, the same. You could thing. just get, yeah, you could just get PS. Well, actually, yeah, you could just get PS1 games and play them. So, yeah. have we, we missed our, anything know, important on this tutorial? Nah, nah, nah. Okay. This is just uh, the the easiest way to get through it. The tutorial fast is to just just do what it says. This one in particular, it requires you to get hit and then do a counter by pressing or a recovery. Right. Uh, and then you can evade. So you've got all your basic attacks. 
you can just mash B and you'll do basic combos. Y is the strong attack that's on a cooldown, and the cooldown is the little circle around the red right. in the middle. I, I do like how we got to see that gorilla obviously bounce off an invisible mm -hmm. wall into another invisible wall. <laughs> hey, you know. Um, if you hold down the B button, you can do a launcher, you can do air combos. If you hold down the B button in the air, you can do a diving attack. Uh, you also have a few other things. We'll see in a second here. So, so this is like a surprisingly gameplay heavy episode. Yeah. All things considered, especially after the last one. Yeah, and the one before that. Mm -hmm. Does that say disarm? Oh, perform a counter. Got it. Yeah, this is a counter. So, uh, enemy counters are, uh, you can tell because they will glow white before mm. their attack. That means that it's a counterable attack. <laughs> Especially if they are evil. Blood, blood mantas. mantas. That's it! Try focusing on another target! That's it! That's it! That's it. That that's it. that 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 that. Uh, uh, I think he's broken. That 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 that. that. You just kind of just, just have to just have to just have to. There we go. It's the E. It's the E. Oh no, I I switched the region on this guy. How do we get it back to? It's like I don't, I, can't, I don't know what. That's uh, English, English, English. There we go. All right, English. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. it. Uh, I think I just said this I. I don't, I don't know. Four years of Spanish, maybe not uh, we'll, worth it. We'll just say that it was a um, uh, in, in, in sort of an English or a there you go. Spanglish, Spanglish, yeah, Spanglish translation. Uh, so Azur also has his rapid fire attacks, which we did see in the first episode. Right. You can use them on the ground too. It's not just a exclusive to uh, space battles when fighting the planet Earth. Right. So not necessarily the only time you can use those. So are you tapping X to do this? Or no, is it just holding down. So holding okay. down is rapid fire. If you tap X, you'll do a burst, which is kind of a shotgun, like a shotgun. Okay. Um, I've not really found any good uses for that. But uh, On the ground, ground combat, which is what we're currently doing, I don't think you can't do the uh, painted target lock. Right, okay. So you can't, can't res can't this. But yeah, it's not, it's not all resed up or any number of other things that do that. Sin and Punishment comes to mind. <laughs> I don't know if I've played that one. Uh, it's a treasure side-scrolling game on the N64 and then a sequel on the Wii. Uh, it's, uh, it's, more, it's more like Panzer Dragoon in that it's okay. behind, the, behind the back. So I guess Panzer Dragoon might be another example. Okay. Finger <laughs> acting. <laughs> that is a crazy well-animated <laughs> finger. All right, now we're literally playing yeah, Dynasty gotta, Warriors. Yeah, we've got a health bar finally, uh, but it's still teaching us about you know the modes. So in this hey, case, Pete. in this case, uh, we're charging up the unlimited gauge. The unlimited gauge is the uh, spikes of energy below the middle that mm -hmm. are filling up, um, and it's it's naturally it's a it's like a devil trigger. So once it fills up, you. Uh, Activate it and then it has a temporary effect, and it just means you don't have um, cooldown for strong attacks okay. while using it. Plus, you're a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, etc., 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 as you might expect from these types of things. Yep. Uh, also, when you activate it, much like, um, let's say, in Devil May Cry 4, much like Nero's Devil Trigger, you have a burst which interrupts attacks and makes you invincible briefly. Mm -hmm. Unlike Devil May Cry 4's version of Dante, whose Devil Trigger activation does not have a burst for invincibility frames. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. The, not that the, this uh, is a sore <laughs> point. No, not a sore point at all. <laughs> it's just one of the many reasons why Nero is a lot easier to play. <laughs> you, if, you have, if you have good timing, you can uh, Devil Trigger your way through otherwise um, bad attacks that would end up killing you. Right. So now you've got your burst go. Oh, hi, it's on There's fire. There's the burst, yes. So the, that yellow gauge is your burst meter, which, as discussed earlier, is the uh, is the cutscene button. So <laughs> you don't you usually you do not defeat your enemies so much as you get angry to a point where you can uh, burst the crap out of them. <laughs> that's that's just the sort of gameplay flow. All right, it's like thrill kill. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! 
<laughs> you can actually skip the tutorial um, if you're doing a replay of the mission, which is not good if you want to have a uh, high score because you do get a lot of points for fighting the fights here. <laughs> right. It's. I think it might. You know, it might be possible, but I don't know. I'm gonna say almost impossible to get enough like battle points without doing this. Yes. I'd like to point out. I, I I just realized this. He was like sleeping, hanging by one arm. <laughs> at the beginning, you know, just kind of. Yeah. I mean, his arms. The the they know. It's like they know. <laughs> they still have things to punch. <laughs> I, I like that he looks kind of like a corgi in that. <laughs> <laughs> just like imagine just Azra Corgi with his incredulous look like is this is this giant golden spider talking to me? Am I in hell? Alright, let's let's talk about anime. Alright. This uh this episode of uh Azura's Wrath is brought to you by Spice and Wolf. Okay. I'm gonna talk about Spice and Wolf now. You, you can talk about uh, Spice and Wolf now. Spice and Wolf is an anime. Okay. okay. That is great, and you should watch it. It's on Netflix. It's on um, Crunchyroll. A lot of things are on Crunchyroll. All right. Well, that's uh, all I need to know. know. Good. I'll see <laughs> everybody. Ne no. There you go. All right. <laughs> and uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, now back to the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> Spice and Wolf is good because... Uh, I, at least personally, I found it very inspirational because I, I, I learned something about myself and about the nature of storytelling uh, is that action, uh, which is something that, you know, in the abstract sense, something that you want to have in a story, right? The right. Drama. I mean, we'll say dramatic situations, uh, but, you, you know, there's action in the case of, you know, like action sequences, you know, explosions and guns and stabbing and whatnot. And that looks great. The kind I like, yes. Yeah, you know, your action movie, classic action. Uh, and then you have your, um, and then you have things that are sort of dramatic, you know, drama, dramatic situations. And you right. know, you have your your sort of Oscar winning pictures and stuff. You know, driving so you, Miss Daisy and yeah. the like. Yeah, yeah. So that stuff is, you know, it's a form. It's it's not action in the same as the visceral action, but you know, it's it's the it's. It's intellectually interesting sort of, you know, dialogue and mm -hmm. reversals and you can have the same kind of drama and, you know, the the same beats that make up a good uh, song or good action sequence or good movie are all pretty much the same because you have your, you know, your pacing, your ebb and flow. You have the, right. you know, you in, in using the musical analogy, you have your, you know, your slower parts, your faster parts, you have your breaks where, you know, nothing happens and you have mm. your builds and drops in the case of like you know, electronic music nowadays. But I mean, that's that. Well, the you, you have your rising have action, forever. your yeah. climax, your falling yeah. action. So yeah, you, yeah it's, it's, it, and it's similar with a uh, standard. Uh, so Spice and Wolf is good because it taught me that an action like a, a fascinating action scene can be a main character explaining to you medieval economics. <laughs> The main character's superpower, because there's not really superpowers, there's the supernatural element because the, one of the main characters is a the wolf of Spice and Wolf, which is a spice being a spice merchant is the guy. And then Wolf mm. is a, it is a wolf girl manifestation of a sort of like harvest deity that is no longer believed in. Okay. Okay. So that's the supernatural element. Um, so you have your fish out of water kind of story where she's basically like a deity but has been long forgotten mm -hmm. and is not as up to speed with you know human matters so you know there's there's obviously some comedy you can get out of that mm -hmm. but it's it's a totally about medieval economics like the guy is a merchant and he's not like a merchant that's a secretly as assassin it's right. like no his job is merchanting he is <laughs> and merchantry he, and he's he in the merchantry and he merchants well <laughs> It's like, like, I just remember a scene in particular where he's explaining, like, the different types of currencies. 
like how because of the different kingdoms and there's not standardized currency, like the different exchange values for like these seven different types of coins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you will have dramatic conspiratorial plots about, you know, flooding the markets with certain kinds of currency to dev devalue others. And <laughs> I was just like, I just like got my popcorn out. I'm just like, oh, oh, continue. <laughs> oh, <no." laughs> That, that that is my recommendation. It has it has two seasons, um, and it also has a very good uh, the the relationship between the main character and the sort of wolf girl is also really good. It is what I would call cute. Mm, okay, um, and it and it develops uh, well. It's not it is it doesn't have the usual sort of um, young anime protagonist curse of like just constant. Um, either obliviousness or like inexperience right and, and you know just like frustrating kind of immaturity mm -hmm. uh it's a little bit more interesting the way that their relationship builds which i appreciated especially since you know a lot of times uh, anime is just you know high school or middle school age kids and you know that's that's it the end right and it'll, it'll be like you know like oh t he like accidentally brushed me he <laughs> so and that's the male yeah. characters a little bit more uh, w well developed and satisfying than that um mm. there's a i did mention this as a caveat earlier there's a, there's a little bit of forced drama mm -hmm. uh, in the second season especially it gets resolved in a good way um uh, but that's more of a like i said it's a disappointment with the high quality of the writing up to that point that there would be kind of a um sort of like well, forced drama in the case of like, well, it, I don't think that they would, you know, it's one of those things where the characters would, Aren't you know, like if, the way they would act based yeah, on how they've acted like, before. Yeah. Like the idiot ball, I guess, is the TV yeah. trope where they, they act in a specific way in order to create to create a dramatic situation that is uh, forced and unearned. Where, yeah, it makes no whereas sense. it would have just been it would have made more sense for the characters to just, you know, like talk it out, which mm -hmm. is something that almost never happens in you know like right. media and that's very frustrating like I you know say, metal gear solid <laughs> yeah it's it's one of those things where it's like hey if we had just said like one or two words to each other at any point in like the last seven years this all would have resolved fine <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on the situation so it has it has those things that i like a lot of those things i like uh the relationship is good um mm -hmm the the plot is interesting like i didn't know that i wanted to watch an anime about medieval economics but i totally did <laughs> <laughs> totally did and i'm well, glad i go. did yeah <clears throat> um and then uh it also is a good uh, it's, it's a good ending too you know that helps too oh wow it has an ending and it's good yeah, yeah oh. it does have a does have a good ending now back to azura's wrath <laughs> more flashbacks fortunately our, our protagonist's amnesia does not really last that long good it's, it's more of a an understandable uh i have literally died um trying to get right. try and coalesce the memories a little bit <laughs> right can so i get this, him back this would be one of the other missing scenes i think but okay. i don't think this ends with uh getting stabbed repeatedly in the back so the verdict's not in on that one whether or not right. it's a missing scene or a half episode or whatever but anyways we can actually die here i guess because you can take damage right well you do have a health meter i guess yeah you, you totally do have a health meter so another thing about this game is that the gauges which is the uh the, the artistic uh look of the health bar at the top yeah uh, there's different versions of that that you can get by unlocking certain achievements slash oh. goals in the game. Okay. Uh, and they have they have different effects. Like one, I think that I have from playing it earlier, uh, is the defender gauge, which just makes you increases your defense, and it has like a different art style at the top, okay. which is kind of neat. Uh, some of the we won't, I don't know if we won't be getting all those. I'm pretty sure that some of them like you know beat the game on hard mode with all S rankings and like in an hour do, yeah in an hour you know without using the Y button or something you know something like that right <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna do a no burst playthrough uh, <laughs> didn't, it didn't work 
<laughs> ho ho. Uh, These guys keep shooting, dude. These little <laughs> flying guys. It's very annoying. Yeah. Uh, I do. I kind of want to just stand and shoot them down, but it's a little. It's a little hard to aim that. Uh, Right. Yeah. It's maybe little, that's you, maybe that's where the shotgun it, works a little better. It might. Yeah. It might. Just tapping X might actually work better on this in this case. The uh, oh, there it is. Up oh, burst. <laughs> tunk tunk. And now we're playing. Struggle! Has been killed. Oh, what is that game? Yeah, this the one that's the one that's really, really pretty, but not fun. Hmm. Uh, Satan I know wears. Yes, yes, designer, designer jeans, jeans, and he talks to God on the cell phone. Uh, oh no, come back to me. It also looks a little bit like Mad World. But. It does. Yeah, I was thinking Sin of a game City. that I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of a game uh, that I enjoyed. E a little. Enoch, you play as e fashionable Enoch. Enoch. <laughs> oh, uh, it's it's gotta come back to me because I know exactly what you're talking about. The traitor Asura has been defeated. Metatron. Not Metatron. <laughs> Metatron is an icosahedral si uh, solid, but uh, it's also an archangel. Yeah. Apocryphal archangel. Deus said he would save the world. It's the, the, the Elo he, Elo Elohim? No. N not Elohim. You're on the El Elo Shaddai. El Shaddai. Yes, it was one of the names of God. I got there. I got there eventually. Ascension of the Metatron. Yes. El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. Metatron That's was totally in there, okay? <laughs> you're right, you're right. Have I angered you? Not you. Not you. Me? They're crying. Crying? In Naraka? There is nothing to hear but the sound of my voice. <laughs> Angry oh. climbing. Alright, so the spider. I like the spider. I really mm -hmm. like the spider. Also, the he is trying is to his memory. <laughs> yeah. So he has not quite remembered his daughter yet. Right. Uh, he just but he's, knows somebody's he's, crying. Yes, he is tormented by her cries. So there's at least that. Hmm. Is this Earth? Well, yes. It's Gaia is the name of the planet. But Earth. But basically, yeah. yes. Earth. Well, it's Earth. Earth. Yeah. Fantasy Earth in my head is always Earth. Always Earth. You know, welcome to Earth. Mm-hmm. You know, he actually enunciates it correctly. I know he does. <laughs> I'm <laughs> aware of that. <laughs> it's just there. There was some disappointment. There was it was it was contentious, and then disappointment when we were watching on, on Independence Day, as you do in America, watch right. Independence Day. Yes. Uh, I was like, you know, he just says it normally. He's like, no, he doesn't. And then we get to the part, and they're like, oh, he does. He goes, "Welcome to Earth." <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh, there's no fun but there. That's it's nothing a fun. to a demigod like yourself, now is it? <laughs> He's got night lights on his face. <laughs> he punched his way out of death. Is this how you save the world? And 12,000 years later, everything kind of, well, as he says right here. This place looks like hell. Indeed. Accurate. <laughs> Someone's got to pay for this, David. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... Next gonna... time we'll get on that. <laughs> And it's going to be everyone who's still alive. You're just going to murder them all. <laughs> they all must die. He's going to have his uh, straw dogs moment. Here you go. I don't know what that's a reference to. The movie Straw Dogs. Uh, sure. Dustin Hoffman. Okay. It's, it is a drama about a guy in moving to a... I'm going to... I think it was... An American moving to like like an English countryside town. I have, mm -hmm. I have not actually seen the movie, but I just kind of know the reference. It's famous for its ending and its tagline, which is "Every man has a breaking point." Uh, so basically, an unassuming guy that and his wife is raped, and there's 
there's basically an assault on his house and he kills them all oh wow so you know it's, it's self-defense but it's 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 one of those not, it's not a, it's not an action movie I'll put it that way it is uh not not anywhere near an action movie so hmm. this is uh I, I like the art here it so makes yes, him look is, even uh, more robotic <laughs> is ro- robotesque so in the uh, intermission here, uh, which I will uh, do a quick summary of, it's basically Azra wandering the hellscape that has become Gaia with the golden spider, constantly asking him about himself, his past, po- poking him, because obviously the golden spider knows what's up. But, uh, he says that this is what came, this is what became of the former world, and this was not done by the Goma. So this is all the responsibility of the deities. Right. So, in in their power play or whatever, um, I'm pretty sure that the destruction of the world was what was blamed on Azura. We saw that in the last intermission. You know, mm-hmm. like the scorching fires that destroyed everything was the, at least in the propaganda revisionist history that they put forth, was all Azura's fault. But it's more of just their uh, selfish power grab. So. Mm-hmm. Again, someone's got to pay. <laughs> like all of them. <laughs> Everybody who isn't his daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody but Mithra gonna die. Mm-hmm. Maybe even Mithra. Maybe maybe more than once. So yeah, Azra doesn't have much to say here aside from shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I think Spider's just like, ah, there's that famous Azra anger. Yes. <laughs> so uh, next time we will uh, we will actually... We will meet our first target, <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, there there will be quite an epic showdown. Hmm. Uh, our our first just just as a little preview of I did cut out the actual preview because it's just here's everything that happens in the next episode. I noticed, uh, but we will uh, meet up with Wizen and his hand acting, <laughs> and then we will rip his and- hand off and smack him in the face with it. And we'll 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 have a civil conversation and we will work out our differences. I'd almost believe you. <laughs> I'd almost believe you if it weren't for the mm-hmm. title of the game. <laughs> Next time on Azra's um oops, something that starts with W like uh, Azra's well-mannered uh, uh me- me- yes, well-mannered mediation. Uh <laughs> Well, well mannered. Um, Azura's sobering intervention. Azura's um, uh, calm discourse. Uh, Azura's, what do you call Azura's uh, respect, uh, respectable forum? I was going to say Azura's well mannered diplomacy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Azura's amazing and uh, alliterative arbitration. <laughs> Well, that's a synonical, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Remember, if it starts with a vowel sound, it's assonance. If it's if it starts with a consonant, then it's alliteration. Uh, okay. I remember uh, that. That's one of the few things I remember from English class. Assonance. I, I think I think alliteration <laughs> is same. I thought it was the same letter and assonance was same sound, so it could be a different letter with the same phoneme attached to it. I think you're wrong, but knowing my track record, I maybe just sounded like a big Let's idiot see. to everyone on the internet. Assonance is also called a vowel rhyme, okay, or prosody. Okay, that's nice. Rhyme in which the same vowel sounds are used to different consonants and stress syllables of the rhyming words as in pertinent reticence. Wow, so I was just wrong? Hmm. Resemblance of sounds, alliteration. What do we got here? Alliteration. <laughs> Are we going to to Wikipedia? <laughs> no, I'm at dictionary.com. I'm, here. I'm literally here every day. <laughs> All right, it's, fine. You got, you, know, you, you got to see the new word of the day. <laughs> I I don't. I've been disappointed by the words of the day recently. Okay? Oh, really? Has it been they, stuff like been... syzygy and stuff like that? No, it would be like stuff like the. <laughs> <laughs> the the f- specific article no it's not quite that bad but, okay yeah. i was about to say what it was just it was just like not not necessarily super common words but like ones that i was like i, I that doesn't sound like a particularly 
It's like exoneration. It's like if you watch Law and Order, you know that one. <laughs> Commencement of two or more stressed syllables of a word group either with the same consonant sound or sound group as in consonantal, consonantal alliteration or as in from stem to stern or with a vowel sound that may differ from syllables of the do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I went into a coma. <laughs> So you were right, I was wrong. Halfway <laughs> through that, it went into a coma. I, after reading these definitions, I'm not sure. <laughs> after having read the subject yeah. matter, yeah, you actually, don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, un, I'm a little unclear as to the... Uh... Well, here's a fun one. Mm. Since we're, we're learning about words that start with A that are um, different forms of word play. Right. Uh, Anti-metaboly is when you have a phrase where the object and subject are reversed for dramatic effect. Like the famous JFK quote, ask not what you can do for your country, but what your country can do for you. Oh, okay. For you, I guess the, that object, indirect object, and then you can do country. Yeah, so subject object gets reversed. And <laughs> talk about the money thing. <laughs> You ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, if if you're enjoying this <laughs> this banter between Jeff and I, because God knows the video ended like seven eight minutes ago, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as it do, <laughs> we have a oh God! All right, hold on. Okay, this video was brought to you by Patreon. Indeed, it was. Uh. Essentially, a Patreon is just a way for us to do this without having ads and be able to do it a little bit more regularly um, and in such a way as it's, you know, fun for everybody uh, at all times. Uh, this uh, this Let's Play was the no one will ever pay for this. Uh, <laughs> the surely no one will pay that much money uh, goal. <laughs> and then someone did. Someone did. And we're like, well, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and and that happened. But if you don't want to give that much, that's fine. You can give us a a buck a month. That's still great. That's a more. That's a buck a month more than we had. Mm -hmm. And these are these are monthly um, monthly pledges, so that we can get a reliable source of income. So, exactly. So we we can apply. So we, not apply. Um, appeal to sort of the niche, the people that actually like what we do, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully do it. You know, full time, eventually. Not there eventually. yet. Eventually. That's a goal. It, it's a goal. It's just to be able to, you know, play games and talk about Wikipedia entries and mm -hmm. read dictionary.com, <laughs> uh, talk about anime, um, make fun of David and his made up words that aren't real words that are fake words that he made up. You know, whatever. <laughs> That's more your mother, honestly. That's true. Mom does that a lot, too. I just butcher but words. I know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, you, you just you're the one that does it in a um in the recorded format so that there's it's you know proof. there's there's proof i don't know deceivious is still one of the good ones yeah that's a good one yeah that's a good one uh should have a character name a character deceivious <laughs> it'd be like the totally trustworthy guy who's definitely on your side and then he actually is through the entire game you're like well i wasn't expecting that it was lo loyalist that was the one that betrayed us. <laughs> oh man, his, his name is like Lucifer Deceivious. It's like yeah, ah, yeah, I don't like, know about yes. this guy. 